The government releases report on transactions of Nissil, the Chinese forestry company keen on advancing large-scale industrial investment. And the president is still looking forward to consultations ahead of the 2013 budget. The details of these and other stories in this week's edition of The Diary for the period January 5 to 11. Thank you for joining us. I am your host, Fibin Krause. Stay tuned. Amerindians are now fully involved in every aspect of development from the highest level of decision making to that of their communities. Amerindians have been catapulted into the mainstream of society because of the educational and other opportunities made available to them by the PPPC administration over the past two decades. Advancement is also being made at the international level where Amerindians represent their country. The health sector can be considered as a training institution since Guyanese are afforded the opportunity to pursue medical training in a number of fields, including medicine, nursing and surgery at the postgraduate level, midwifery, dentistry and technicians. All of these ensure efficient delivery of health care, a message from the Government Information Agency. The Women of Worth program, a microcredit scheme introduced to lift the economic standing of especially single parents, has transformed the lives of over 2,300 women. Tapping into the loan facility has enabled them to better their and their families' lives. Great improvements have been made in road construction and rehabilitation under the Hinterland Road Program. In the Moruka sub-region, Region 1, 60 miles of road was rehabilitated and constructed, while in Region 4, 12 miles of the St. Cuthbert's Trail has been transformed into an all-weather road. The government has released a report detailing all transactions handled by the privatization unit and NISL from 1993 to 2012, putting to rest all speculations about transparency at the entity. Copies of the report that recently won approval of the cabinet were presented to the media following a press conference hosted by the president at his office. Entitled Privatization in Tables, Phase 2, 1993-2012, the report is a follow-up to Guyana's privatization program, the Institutional Framework and Results of Phase 2, 1993-2009 to report. I sincerely hope that this will end a lot of speculation because you will be having some facts in your hands. The entity netted $25.6 billion in proceeds, $11 billion of which was paid to the Treasury, $6.4 billion capitalized and $4.8 billion paid to NISL, and $2.6 billion paid to other entities, according to the report. NISL's compliance with accountability procedures saw over 105 sets of accounts for its entities laid in the National Assembly up to the year 2010 by Minister of Finance Dr. Ashni Singh. The President said the government will hold to its commitment in this regard. You are aware that very early in my administration that I had the opposition, the main opposition leaders here at OP, and we spoke to them about their mile of falls. I'm, I said then, and I state again, that I'm still ready to um, work with them to give them any information they want on many of the other projects. Many of the other projects that are still not, some of them have not come to fruition as yet. The government views the report as vindication that NISL's transactions have been conducted in a transparent manner as against wide speculations and criticisms that have been making headlines in recent months. By Shenlin Forest Development Incorporated, the Chinese wood processing company operating in construction, shipping, timber sale and mining in Guyana, is looking to move ahead with haste on its large-scale industrial plans, among which is a wood economic and trade park in Guyana. Chu Wenzi, president of the China Forest Industries Group Company Limited, the parent company to the Bai Shan Lin Forest Development Incorporated, met the head of state for talks on its wood economic and trade park establishment in Guyana. The park, which will occupy five square kilometers and divided into three construction phases, will promote production of various kinds of wood products. In our plan, uh, it's about two years for us to do the construction of this, uh, this uh, park. 
While wood processing will be the main feature, the park will also encompass industries for shipbuilding, wood working, machinery, processing and manufacturing, food and aquatic processing, mining, and also include a school and hospital. Construction of an international mall and an exhibition center are also on the cards. Our uh, international mall and exhibition center is located behind the stadium in Providence. The Providence area has been flooded with investments so numerous that in the near future will make it part of the urban network. Along with government's massive housing drive on the East Bank Corridor, numerous investment proposals from international construction companies, some in excess of over 500 million US dollars, have been advanced. In November last year, President Chu Wenji, who has a 40-year involvement in the timber industries, had signed off on a loan with the Chinese Development Bank for the forestry project in Guyana in the presence of Ghana's ambassador to China, Dr. David Dabadine. Throughout the eight-odd years it has been operating in Guyana, and the company said it has been in full compliance with Guyana's laws and regulations. You are watching The Diary. More still ahead. The health sector can be considered as a training institution since Guyanese are afforded the opportunity to pursue medical training in a number of fields, including medicine, nursing and surgery at the postgraduate level, midwifery, dentistry and technicians. All of these ensure efficient delivery of health care. A message from the Government Information Agency. The Women of Worth program, a microcredit scheme introduced to lift the economic standing of especially single parents, has transformed the lives of over 2,300 women. Tapping into the loan facility has enabled them to better their and their families' lives. Great improvements have been made in road construction and rehabilitation under the Hinterland Road Program. In the Moruka sub-region, Region 1, 60 miles of road was rehabilitated and constructed, while in Region 4, 12 miles of the St. Cuthbert's Trail has been transformed into an all-weather road. Given his encounters last year, the head of state is still looking forward to consultations with the opposition political parties ahead of the 2013 national budget. The finance minister has already been tasked with extensive consultations on the 2013 national budget and according to the president was scheduled on January 11 to meet with interest groups. The process will follow a similar pattern to the 2012 budget preparations that saw extensive consultations with the opposition political parties that hold a one-seat majority in the National Assembly. That process didn't end smoothly, but has not clouded President Ramatar's hope of using the same approach this time around. Preparatory work has to be done on budget long before, but the, in, the, in the final analysis we can still do some work on it. You recall that we were negotiating with the, um, with the PNC, with the AF, APNU and AFC, even after the budget was presented last year. So I, I'm not uh, pessimistic that we can still work and have, um, consult have meaningful consultation on, on, on this. Asked whether there would be a backup plan to offset the possibility of failed talks, the head of state assured that the government has to be alert for any eventuality. My focus at this point in time is trying to develop the country as much as possible. That's my focus. That's where I'm putting all my energies and so forth. Um, to come up with some good plans, good um, projects that can help us move our country forward, keep our economy going, create employment to people, looking at people's welfare in education, health, housing, and so forth. So that's my focus. Um, I haven't um, been focusing on having an elections, but if it is imposed on me, I hope I'll be totally prepared for that as well. Budget 2013 is due for presentation in February. Guyana and Suriname worked on building bilateral relations over the years, and there is high optimism about the two countries' relations in the future. Dr. Manorma Suknandan, who has been an integral part in that process, ended her 11-year tender as Surinamese ambassador to Guyana. The outgoing ambassador ended her 11-year tenure as Suriname's ambassador to Guyana, meeting President Donna Ramotar after a farewell reception hosted by Guyana's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We had a very good talk <laughs> for about, as you might have uh, noticed, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we've discussed several issues. And it was a free flow of information sharing, 
uh, in-depth analysis of situations, etc. She was appointed Suriname's ambassador to Guyana a few years after the two countries had been embroiled in a maritime row that marred its relations, but was put to rest with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Seas Arbitral Tribunal Award. The two countries have since vowed to build on trust and initiatives that are binding. When you look at the economic, political, cultural uh, relationship, you can see that it has increased tremendously, but also that it has taken more depth. Relations deepened after a change of government in the Dutch-speaking country saw the new Desi Bautiser administration working with the Ghana government on the Border Commission to build on trust between the two nations and cooperate on law enforcement, agriculture, and other areas. Guyana's chief diplomat and her Surinamese counterpart, Winston Lacking, have been at the center of talks in this regard, acting on instructions from President Ramatar and Bautasur for a meeting of foreign affairs officials of both countries at least once every six months. A visit by President Donald Ramatar to Suriname in February last year led to discussions on bilateral relations, security, climate change, CARICOM, physical infrastructure, and a feasibility for the bridging of the Quarantine River, which separates the two countries. People to people contact is very important. And if we want to prosper, um, have economic advantages, and etc., for both countries, I think it's uh, important that the people to people contact. That, that deepens. With similarities in mining, agriculture, and geography, Ambassador Suknandan is optimistic that the two countries can play a core role in development within CARICOM, for which they are members. Do stay with us, there is more of the diary. Great improvements have been made in road construction and rehabilitation under the Hinterland Road Program. In the Muruka sub-region, Region 1, 60 miles of road was rehabilitated and constructed, while in Region 4, 12 miles of the St. Cuthbert's Trail has been transformed into an all-weather road. The Women of Worth program, a microcredit scheme introduced to lift the economic standing of especially single parents, has transformed the lives of over 2,300 women. Tapping into the loan facility has enabled them to better their and their families' lives. The health sector can be considered as a training institution since Guyanese are afforded the opportunity to pursue medical training in a number of fields, including medicine, nursing and surgery at the postgraduate level, midwifery, dentistry and technicians. All of these ensure efficient delivery of health care. A message from the Government Information Agency. Amerindians are now fully involved in every aspect of development from the highest level of decision making to that of their communities. Amerindians have been catapulted into the mainstream of society because of the educational and other opportunities made available to them by the PPPC administration over the past two decades. Advancement has also been made at the international level where Amerindians represent their country. ...that were scheduled to resume this year between the government and leadership of Region 10 on a development plan for Linden have been put on hold by the region's decision to meet stakeholders in the mining town for discussions on the agreements reached during last year. But given the ugly turn of events last year, the government is very skeptical about this latest move. The first meeting for 2013 was scheduled for January 4 between the government and administration of Region 10 that would have identified the panel to review the new electricity tariff that was met with much opposition and ugly protest demonstrations last year. With the Region 10 officials' latest decision to hold public meetings with stakeholders of the town to discuss the outcome of agreements with the government last year, those discussions have been put on hold. It had reached a far way with names submitted for both the Electricity Tariff Review and the Economic Services Committee that were agreed upon. Presidential Advisor on Governance Gail Teixeira, who had played an integral part in those discussions at the Office of the President, recently reported to the media that the Region 10 delegation had no objection to reservations about the government's nominees to chair the Economic Committee, but instead advanced their own nominees. The work of the Electricity Technical Committee set up in August had reached a stumbling block when the chairman, Narvan Passad, tendered his resignation. Concerns were also raised about the television license for the region, but according to the government spokesperson, the Ghana Broadcasting Authority will be inviting the applicants from Region 10 and will offer advice on the legal procedures required. The head of state sees the row over the site location for the 1823 monument for the Demerara Save Rebellion as nothing more than a hullabaloo. 
The president told members of the press that Guyani should be more inclined to honor the martyrs and the significance of the historic rebellion regardless of the location, corroborating his views with reference to the coffee monument. The 1763 occurred in Fort Beast, but we have the monument in Georgetown. So the main, I think the main issue is being missed by a lot of pettiness. I more or less agree that there was not much alternative to where the spot is. I'm not against putting it in, the, in one of the villages and so on and so forth. But there is really no, no space to many of these areas. Ground preparation is at present ongoing in the vicinity of Carifesta Avenue and Blasingen Road for the monument which sculptor Ivor Tom said has been completed, even as opposing groups have come out in protest. The location was also selected following futile attempts to solicit suggestions from the public, according to Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. Frank Anthony, who also came out in defense of the site where the construction is ongoing. The focus should be on honoring and absorbing the occasion and the significance of the occasion, which I think this spot that it is going to be on is very prominent in that regard. The year 2013 is one of significance as it will mark the 250th anniversary of the Burby slave uprising, the 175th anniversary of the arrival of Indians in Guyana, and the 175th anniversary of the abolition of slavery. President Ramatar is hoping that such historic occasions foster greater understanding and a deeper appreciation among Guyanese. A five-year work program that began in 2011 by the Baha'i Faith in Guyana in communities across Guyana, taking the form of youth education programs at different levels and devotional meetings in select areas, has entered its second year. Members of the faith who met the president on December 7 provided an update on the program. It caters for three age groups, beginning with junior classes for youths 12 to 14, study circles for youths 15 and above, that equips them with the necessary work skills to, among other things, give their time and knowledge back to the program. Youth activities vary from one community to the other and feature lessons on developing spiritual character, the history of the Baha'i faith, and other religions. That's all in this week's edition of the Diary for the period January 5 to 11. Before we go, these are just some of the highlights. The government releases report on all missile transactions. A Chinese forestry company keen on advancing large-scale investments. And the president is still looking forward to dialogue and consultations ahead of the 2013 national budget. Do join us again next week when we'll bring you more of the diary. Do have a pleasant and safe rest of the week.